What's going on, Celtics fans? Welcome to Celtics Today by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Allie Barefoot. I've got two major topics I want to discuss with you guys. Number one, Jason Tatum popped up on the injury report before yesterday's loss to the Atlanta Hawks as questionable. He played, but then he got somewhat injured in that ball game. so we're going to talk about that. Unfortunately, on the back half of the show, we now have to address what a loss in the NBA Cup means for the Boston Celtics. It was disgusting. It was embarrassing. The fact that you lost the Atlanta Hawks without Trey Young, you should be disappointed. But we're going to talk about that, and you guys are going to stick around for that. So let's pop in to the box score that we saw last night when we lost to the Atlanta Hawks, which once again... I can't even believe we're making a video about this. This was a phenomenal offensive game, scoring-wise, from Brown, Tatum, and White. Jalen Brown, 37 points just two games after returning from his, from his left hip flexor injury. And then Derek White, also in the 30s, 31, six boards. Jason Tatum, 20 points, but still, that's great for being listed as questionable just hours before you decided to play and start in this game. But this is a stat I want to talk about. Six turnovers, three turnovers, five turnovers. It was disgusting the way that we handled the basketball is even more gross the way that we refused to rebound but I digress let's talk about Jason Tatum all right because when he was listed as questionable that's when I started to get a little bit concerned because we already know we play four games without Jalen Brown we do not have Chris Porzingis until the foreseeable future and then Jason Tatum who has been really making a case for MVP is now listed as questionable. Well, he played the entire ball game, and after the game, we did discuss that ankle injury to Gary Washburn and other members of the media saying, Tatum said the left ankle is tender, but he will play tomorrow. Talking about tonight going up against the Brooklyn Nets. This was after yesterday's game, even before he was listed on that injury report, and then a play happened going up against the Atlanta Hawks, and I was like, shit. That can't be good. And I'm talking about this play right here, right? You see that right ankle? That's not the left, but his right ankle, which caused him to start moving a little bit gingerly. And then, unfortunately, I couldn't find the play where he really came down on that left ankle. But he was really getting in the nitty-gritty. He was playing in the paint. He was playing around the post. And now you see he put a little bit of a strain on his right ankle. And now his left ankle is a little bit torn up here because he came down on Larry Nance Jr. trying to go up for a block. But this actually all goes back to Sunday's game when they played the Milwaukee Bucks. And this was a controversial no-call for Giannis Antetokounmpo jumping into Jason Tatum's landing zone. This is where it all started, right there. You see how that ankle just kind of bucks? It just kind of pops out of his shoe right there as Giannis is fully in his bubble shooting this three. This was a no call, and Tatum was pissed about it. So that's where the left ankle started to be a little bit gingerly and the tenderness started. But then Tatum came out after this ball game saying he was furious, and he touched a little bit on that ankle. Tatum said it's a little bit sore. It'll probably be a little sore tomorrow. Which was, the get, which was the day in between the Hawks and the Bucks game. But then he really touched on the referees here. Your job is to protect the guys on the court. I could have been out for six weeks, and that's no joke with the way that his ankle looked like it popped out of his shoe there. I mean, that, that could easily be a four to six weeks ankle sprain. And the last thing you want for Jason Tatum is some lingering ankle issues because I now have flashbacks going back to the Eastern Conference Finals going up against the Miami Heat when when he got injured in the first minute of that series. And then eventually, of course, he did continue to play, but we obviously lost that series. So Jason Tatum's ankles, very fragile. But the last thing the Celtics need is not having Porzingis or Tatum. That's going to be a very hard month. So far, he's great. But now I'm wondering, all right, it was a little bit sore after the Bucks, Bucks game. And then now he's saying it's tender after the Hawks game. Should Joe Missoula sit him? Should he just really focus on this ankle right now? Or does he keep playing upwards of 28 to 32 minutes a game? Let me know. You be Joe Missoula. Should Tatum sit with a tender slash sore ankle? Type S for sit. Type PT for play through it. Let me know in the comment section down below. All right. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what the NBA Cup means for the Boston Celtics. Now with one loss in their tournament. 
It's disgusting that they lost to the Hawks. I'll touch on that in just a moment here because you guys are going to want to stick around for that. But before we hop into that, let me tell you real quick about our sponsor here on Celtics today, and that's Prize Fix, the number one daily fantasy sports app in America. If you guys aren't playing Prize Fix right now, and be honest, you're kind of missing out. You kind of should have FOMO because when I play Prize Fix, it is so much fun. All you guys have to do is just pick more or less on a player's projected stats and you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as 10 correct picks. Not to mention it's super easy to deposit with Apple Pay. It's super easy to withdraw with one quick verification. You guys can get your money in less than 72 hours. So if you guys want to go on ahead and check out prize picks, well, there are several sports that you guys can play along with right now. Being crossover season, you guys can test your your skills with several different players, collegiate and professional, across several different sports. I'm going to take Lamar Jackson for Sunday's football games. I've got more than 235 and a half passing yards. Lamar Jackson really trying to make that rush for MVP. And then same with Jason Tatum. I'm actually going to take the less because now everything that I know about his ankle, I don't really want him to score more than 26 and a half points because that should mean that he's not playing that much. But they do take on the Brooklyn Nets here tonight, so I've got more and less. You guys can go on ahead and make your picks right now by downloading the Prize Picks app using promo code CLNS for a first time deposit match. Excuse me, first time $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Download the Prize Picks app, use promo code CLNS for $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. What the fuck happened last night? I just, I'm so sorry. I got to put that out there. You lost to the Atlanta Hawks without Trey Young. You beat yourselves. And I don't want to discredit the Hawks at all because they deserve to win that ball game. Dyson Daniels, Jalen Johnson, Clint Capella, they were doing everything right. The Celtics sucked. Turnovers. Lack of rebounding. The only thing that kept the Celtics in that ball game was their three-point percentage. But that has now proved that Missoula ball can only go so far. You still have to play basketball. The other facets of the game, not just score threes. And not to mention that I wouldn't be as pissed off. I'd still be pissed off. But I wouldn't be as concerned if it wasn't an NBA Cup game. Of course, yesterday kicked off the group play for every team in the NBA. So now you're starting to face a little bit of implications for your losses. So what does that one loss mean for Boston in the NBA Cup? Does this mean that they're done? Does this mean that they don't even have to play anymore? What's kind of at stake here? So pretty much, no. No. That does not mean that they're out of this. They can still win. They can still try hard. And honestly, they should try hard. Because when I first saw this NBA East C group, which is what Boston Celtics NBA Cup group looks like, I first saw us, I'm like, the Hawks, Chicago Bulls, yeah, okay. The Cleveland Cavs, spicy. And the Wizards, who? Who? That was my initial reaction to this. Well, you lost to the Hawks. The Bulls are winning ballgames. The Cleveland Cavaliers are undefeated. And the Washington Wizards still suck. So now that you've got this EC group, this is a really good opportunity for the Boston Celtics to have some nice competitive play. And like I said, one loss does not mean they cannot win. Right now, this is just the group play. And they really do go based on point differential. Remember last year, we had to beat the Chicago Bulls by 23 points or more to even move on to face the Indiana Pacers. So the Celtics still have time to get back up in the high rankings of their group. But then last night after they lost, and I went home and I thought about it for a little while longer, I was like, should Boston even care about the Celtics, the NBA Cup? They already won the Larry O'Brien Trophy. They won that like five months ago. Should we even really give a shit about the NBA Cup? I know they're trying to ramp this thing up and try to give it a meaning, but um, yes. That's the short answer. Hell yes, they should care about the NBA Cup. I know it's not the Larry O'Brien, but a win is a win. And if you ask any of those players, I know that they actually do care about the NBA Cup because here's what's actually at stake for why the Boston Celtics should try and win this tournament. Number one, it's an extra payday. You guys love bonuses. I love bonuses. Joey P loves bonuses because that means you're working hard and you're getting rewarded. Well, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are the highest paid players in the NBA. It doesn't go for Peyton Pritchard and Baylor Shireman and Nemius Keita, but winning the NBA Cup, Cup could mean a lot for them because they get 
paid $500,000 per player if you win the NBA Cup. That's huge. Not to mention $205,000 for at least making it to the finals. The losing semifinalists, $100,000. Losing quarterfinalists, $50,000 per player. You should be rewarded for doing great things. I know it's not all about the money, but this could go this would go a long way for a team that is really struggling with that luxury tax line. And then number two, it'll set the tone for the finals. The reason why they're bringing in this in-season tournament is because they don't want to make this te these teams play 82 games and only have one chance to win. They wanted to make something that you could win in the middle of the season because let's break it down. Playing the Wizards three to four times a year, it gets daunting. It's boring. You have to find challenges. Well, this is a challenge. And you do not want to lose motivation round game, what, 41, well after you won the NBA Finals, and now that that hype is all gone, you want to be able to play for something. And the Boston Celtics here still have that chip on their shoulder of, you don't want to settle and allow the league to forget who you are. And right now, they've done a really good job of that, of being 9-3. and three. They're proving that, hey, you know, they still have a winning record. They're still one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. You need to still prove that you are a threat and that we can beat you in this in-season tournament as well as in the NBA Finals. But the only remark I have on the Celtics, if they do end up turning this around and winning the NBA Cup, is for the love of God, don't hang a banner. Don't be the Los Angeles Lakers. Do not hang a banner for winning the NBA Cup. That's just my opinion, because I think the only banner that should be up there is the world champions. But, you know, that's just me. Number three, there's actually some good competitive play in your Eastern C group. Speaking of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I'll go back to this group here of the fact that you thought the Atlanta Hawks were going to be an easy team. They should have been. I don't think you're ever going to lose the Hawks again this season. You beat them by 30 11 days ago, and then you lost by one last night. But Dyson Daniels, Jalen Johnson, Trey Young, they're proving to be a pretty good matchup for the Boston Celtics. Chicago Bulls, Kobe White. Really starting to put up some good numbers. But the Cavs is the team I want to talk about here. I'm talking to Patrick Seatman earlier today. I'm saying, damn, Cleveland's kind of legit. Cleveland's undefeated. They're leading the albeit kind of shitty Eastern Conference right now. And the Boston Celtics should have their eyes set on taking down the Cavs, not just in the regular season, but in the NBA Cup. Because that very well could be a preview to the Eastern Conference Finals later in May. So my last question here for you guys is, can the Boston Celtics win the NBA Cup? We know that logistically they can. But do you guys think that talent-wise, motivation-wise, and skill set, they should be able to win the NBA Cup? Type Y for yes, type in for no. And as always, if anything happens with the Boston Celtics, I want you guys to be able to come here and get it first. So go on ahead and subscribe.